the Wildcats will be playing the Marble Falls Mustangs for the first time ever. At Wildcats coming in this game one and three, the Mustangs two and two. Wildcats coming off of a pretty poor performance against. I forget who they were playing, actually. Do you remember who they were playing, Michael? That was the Grizzlies. That was indeed the Grizzlies. Glenn Grizzlies. Glenn Grizzlies. I remember them pretty well with those 62 points. Oh, yes. They ran after us. Good points. Now, I interviewed the coach before this game, and he talks about that one of the main things he's trying to do is just execute on offense and execute on defense because they have many weapons on offense, but they cannot seem to execute on defense. They know if they can do that, they will have a good chance of winning today. It's homecoming night for the Marble Falls Mustangs. So this is a pretty big crowd they have going here. We have a crowd mic and not super loud. It's like they're about to play the school song and we're getting ready for the coin toss. So I'm looking for a good matchup here tonight. I'm hoping for a good game this, this week. You know, I'm interested about this matchup because, one, it is Mustangs homecoming. And I know Elgin can win on homecoming. They beat one against Rudder on their homecoming in the second game of the season. So they have a shot against the Mustangs for their homecoming. <laughs> Perhaps they'll be two for two homecomings. This is kind of cool. The Mustangs send out their captains, and they send out almost the entire team out onto the field. So this is a pretty cool little moment. Everyone shaking hands. It's exciting to see this team come together. I'm sure it's been emotional for them coming off to two losses back to back yeah they're looking for a win both teams are just looking for a win right now so it's a good chance they might just throw the kitchen sink at this one yeah right now they're 0-1 in district play yes. so they're both at the bottom with Bass Drop at the top so I feel like this victory is going to be the key in order to for district play and make a rally yep. for the other games Elgin has won the toss. They have elected to defer. So the Mustangs will be receiving the opening kickoff. And last week they did not do that. They uh, elected to receive and pretty much went nowhere. So this should be a much, I think that's a much better decision, honestly. I do like kicking off to start the game because you get it at the second half. Now we're about to play a national anthem. Play ball. Now getting ready to play some football here. About one minute away from kickoff. So once again, I'm Brian Ring at Michael here, providing color commentary. So Brian, what do you think the difference is compared to last game that Elgin's going to need to make for this game? 
The big difference is defense, defense, defense. They have to be able to execute and get stops on defense. And if they can do that, they'll have a, they'll have a chance. Because they've been executing on offense. The key to every game is always execute, execute, execute. That is true. Defense wins championships, wins ball games. Yep. As well, I think it, I want to see more protection of the football by the offense. Definitely, there too. some costly turnovers in the last game. Yeah, they kept shooting themselves in the foot with some, you know, there were some unlucky breaks. They had some, you know, questionable calls. But, you know, you got to put that behind you. It's all about today. Yep, because they still have a chance. If they win this one and then move on and win the next few, you know, they can turn around and advance. Yep. Back deep to receive for the Mustangs, we have Tommy Johnson and Andrew Rodriguez in to kick for the Wildcats is Kenneth Esquivel. Let's see what they will do here. Probably going to kick it deep. Here we go, and the kick is off. A little bit of a low kick, fair catch called for and caught at the C31 yard line. My number 13, that is Lance Long for the Mustangs. And so this drive will start on the 31 yard line of Marble Falls Mustangs. That's good field advantage right there, Brian. Yeah, it's definitely a good field position. You don't, line. you don't see very many deep kicks in high school football, and you notice he called a fair catch. You're starting to see that more and more in kickoffs. Andrew Stripling in at quarterback. In the gun. Two, three receivers to his right. Actually, to his left, excuse me. Now in motion. Jet sweep going up the left side. Trying to find the corner. Gets maybe about a few yards is Andrew Rodriguez. A gain of around, I believe, three, maybe two yards. It'll be second and eight on the 34-yard line. Jet sweep is their go-to. Definitely, you can definitely see Rodriguez does have some speed to him. Yeah, that's number three, Rodriguez. Yeah, maybe we'll see some, a lot of speed, yeah, for sure. So let's see here, Stripling in the gun, back to throw. Fakes, throws it deep down the field, wide open is number 33 from the Mustangs. He's got open space, he's at the 20, the 10, the 5, touchdown Mustangs. Number 33, Cooper Wilson, sorry, Copper Wilson. There for the strike on the second play from scrimmage, the Mustangs come out and score. Number 33, Copper Wilson just did an excellent seam, seam route on that play and caught it about 20 yards out and just had green right in front of him. Yeah, there was no right one. Distance. There was no one in front of him. No one in front of him. And they Great tried it. touchdown, Elgin Wildcats. And they try the extra point is Logan Barnes. Kick is up. And the extra point is no good. They miss the extra point. The marble falls, so gets a silver lining there. So 20 seconds in, the score is Mustang 6, Wildcats 0. So sec 2 plays in. They went, trying to do the math here, 69 yards on two plays in 20 seconds. And they missed the extra point. But hey, Brian, they got points on the board, and that's what matters here. They came out first hand, and, you know, touchdown. Great drive. It definitely was a good drive. Now back deep to receive it. I cannot see his number, sadly. It is number 10, Peter McFarland. Like in the kick, it is Andrew Rodriguez. It is indeed. He can do it all. Actually, that's number 31. Excuse me. That is the Logan Barnes. And that kick's going to go out of bounds. So Barnes having a bit of accuracy issues to start this game off. He's on the first top level. So we got some kids walking around the microphone out there. And 
and now this is new. I've never seen this before. The ball was kicked out of bounds, and they're going to re-kick. That, that's new to me. I've never seen that before. Normally, they just put the ball on the 40-yard line. I don't see that either. Something about special teams with Elgin, they just have bad luck at the moment. You know, first off, it was last week with, you know, the, the referee interfering with the, their, you know, special teams. And now it's, the, you know, this week. Well, give another chance for Barnes to see if he can keep it inside the field of play. Barnes in, and here's the kick. Kicks off to the left side. This one's going to stay in. Fielded at the 25-yard line. Trying to make room. He's got room. Up the sideline is number eight. Trey Isom, and he gets past the 50-yard line into Muscat territory. Mustang territory, excuse me. They got the two teams trying to combine the name together. I believe that was 31 from the Elgin Wildcats on that stop. To get him go out of bounds. Was that the Harkins in at QB. Two receivers to his right. Handoff up the middle. Big trying to find some room, and he's going to gain around, let's call it five yards, to the 41-yard line. It's like Peter McFarlane. So it'll be second down and four, they're going to call it. So Jacob Harkins in the gun. McFarlane in the backfield. Two receivers to his left and to his right. Back to pass is Harkins. Looking over the middle. Fires and open was number 26, Jerome Ray, but unable to connect. He'll be third and four. And I made a giant mistake on that first touchdown. That was actually the Mustangs touchdown. I'm going to turn that microphone down. Some people might be walking around on it. Mm -hmm. someone kick it. We apologize. I heard someone kick that. Be third and four, Harkins in the gun. Looking option play. Pitch off to McFarlane. McFarlane, he's got the first down. He's got the sideline trying to make moral room and gets it down all the way to the 15-yard line. Perfectly executed option play there for the first down. It'll be first down on the Mustang 15. And that's Peter McFarlane. He just he skipped past one block, he juked right, and then... Just about 30 plus yards on the game, on, on the ground right there. McFarlane in the gun. Handoff right side. McFarlane. Touchdown, Wildcats. That was actually number eight, Trey Isom. Trey Isom went up the middle right there and threw between two gaps. No one even touched him. Great touchdown, Isom. Elgin Wildcats. So Wildcats able to come through and score early as well. Now in try the extra point is Aaron Arse. Try to make it a one point game. Kick is up. And good. So the Wildcats take the lead 7-6. to six. So the Mustangs come out and they score quickly and the Wildcats come out and score quickly. We're going to take a short break here. We'll be right back. Listening to Elgin Wildcats football here on KMAX Sports. And bye. All right, let me talk to you about some sponsors here. We got the gold sponsors. Solid Ground Storage, Frontier Bank, Wilts and Preet Civil Engineers, Tumlinson Electric, Navajas Electric, Elgin, Chiropractic Center, First National Bank, Rush Chevrolet, Elgin General Store, Southside Market and Barbecue, Jack's Tire and Wheels. Thank you all so much for your sports. For Excuse me, for your sponsors. And now it's kickoff time. Elgin's kickoff. And excuse me, my apologies for the first touchdown. With these purple colors, you know, you can get them mixed up easily since we're on the Mustang side. But again, Elgin Wildcats are in the white and gray. 
And the Mustangs are in the purple. Looks like it's going to be a squib kick out to the 40-yard line for 39-40 yard line for a fair catch by the Mustangs. Thank you again for joining us. This is KMAX Sports White Media. I am Michael alongside with Brian. Uh, looks like Mustangs are out to start their second drive. With twins left, single right, two running backs on each side of the quarterback. Hands it off to the running back for a couple of yards on the game. And that's stopped by number 17, Odie Hintons. All right, we have twins left, twins right. For your Mustang. And I'm back, folks. Sorry, I had to go get myself some food. I gotta be honest with you, I have a really bad migraine right now, so I'm just trying to get some food in my belly. Great coverage by number six, David Isom, for your Elgin Wildcats. Now being up third down, be third and six from the Mustang 44 yard line. So this is where they struggled last week, the Wildcats. They could not get the other team off the field. So right now, they're just trying to get back on offense. Handoff up the middle. He's going to have the first down. Leave that as he has indeed number seven. That is Hayden Wells. And I'll move the chains to put the ball right on the 50-yard line. So it'll be first and 10 from the 50. And that's where Wildcats ins inside linebackers need to come there, come stop that hole pretty much right up the middle. Yeah, he had all the room in the world to run. <laughs> yeah, off up the middle. Gain around two yards to the Elgin 40, let's call it 47 yard line. It's more of a game of three yards. All right. In the gun of the Mustang, second and seven from the 47-yard line. That was back. Handoff right side, number 33. He's got room, but will not make the first down. It was a handoff to Copper Wilson, who scored that touchdown in the previous drive, and they'll be third, and I believe, one yard. Yeah, one, two yards. Long. They're going to call two it two yards. The ball on the 42-yard line. Elgin in front, seven to six. And if Elgin Wildcats can hold on here, it will be huge for them. This will be a big stop right here. And will deliver us the momentum. Tripling in the gun. Snap is high. Can't seem to hold on to it. And they're going to get him behind the line of scrimmage. The center snapped the ball just a little bit too high. And it threw off his rhythm and able to get to him quickly. And you have a player down on the field. And that was Willie Simmons, number nine, for your Elgin Wildcats on that sack with the other few other Wildcats. Pretty much gang tackled and gang tackled. Having to play down, I cannot see his number. Everyone's gathering around taking a knee. But great job by William Simmons. And he's back up. That was number 78, Brian Solaro. Or Celerio, excuse me. Glad he's back up. Yeah, he, he hopped no. up pretty well. Just need some water. Definitely. So it's fourth and four. Let's see what they're going to do here. You can't risk it at the moment. 
Yeah, you definitely you can't. Gotta, you gotta punt it away. But then again, I'm not playing at the moment. Well, so. Then again, they're still on the field. Tripling still in the gun. Be fourth and four from the Wildcat 44-yard line. Huge play here. All right, snap it. Snap is over the head of Stripling, and he's got to find a way to hold on to it. Wildcats think they have it. No signal from the referee. Yeah, it looks like. Well, it wouldn't really matter either way. The ball will be placed really <laughs> good spot for the Welkin Wildcats in the Mustang territory. So for the second play in the row, the center snapped one high, and that time it went right over the head of Andrew Stripling, and now the Wildcats have a chance to add on to their lead. Yay, Wildcats. That, that was definitely luck on their side. Definitely luck on their side. Got a few lucky breaks tonight. Harkins in the gun. Harkins looking to throw, rolling to his right. Throws a pass and gets nailed, but makes the catch is Trey Isom. Isom got lit up as soon as he caught that one. Great job to hang on there. Trey Isom definitely has some hands on that catch. It was pretty much an out route going out, and he hung on to the football. Yes. I probably would have lost that one. Definitely. He got hit almost as soon as he caught that one. So great concentration there. So it'll be second and six. On the Mustang 33-yard line, Harkins in the gun. In motion goes Isom. Hand up up the middle to McFarland. McFarland's got running room, gets all the way to the first down. One of the Mustangs players lost their hat. I, I love this play and how they motion Trey Isom. It, um, it actually be it short of the, the defense. Actually going to be short of the first down. So Harkins is not going to be taking a snap under center. Normally this means that you're going to see a a very, a very quick running play. You don't see under center very often in high school football. And Harkins is going to take himself on a QB sneak, and he's going to have the first down out and around the 24-yard line. It's interesting to see goal line, that type of formation, on the 25-yard line in general. It is definitely, well, especially in high school football. You see that in the end zone. Yeah, well, in high school you don't usually see under center. Under center again is Harkins. That's not going to be handoff. Oh, it's a fake. It's a turnaround. Handoff to Isom. Isom's got the corner. Touchdown, Trey Isom. And Trey Isom had the speed on that play. Once he broke that, um, broke up the gap. It was just pure end zone for Well, him. let me explain that one to you again. It was kind of like a little bit of a wishbone play. They faked the handoff to McFarlane and then handed it over to Isom, who had wide open space. Now the score is 13-6 to in favor of the Wildcats. Aaron Arson in the attempt the extra point. The kick is up. And the kick is good. So the Wildcats are up 14-6 to on a touch on a touchdown run by Trey Isom. And if don't get, I think that's the second touchdown. This game for Trey Isom, so he's having to have a pretty good game so far. So it's 14 to six, Wildcats. And Trey Isom right now, he is on fire. I say just continue on doing what you're doing with considering 14 points already up. They obviously learned from last week's game. Thank you all again for listening to KMAC Sports Fight Media on this homecoming night for the Mustangs. Kenneth okay, that's the ball and to kick it. Back deep to receive it is number three, Tommy Johnson. And number, sorry, number three, Andrew Rodriguez. Number two is Tommy Johnson. Except it's going to be a short kick. Onside, and it's going to be dropped. Ball's on the ground. Who has it? And it's going to be Mustang football. The ball was hit the turf, but the Mustangs were able to fall back on it on their own 40-yard line. And that's this drive will start. There's a flag on the play. Another flag on the kickoff team. Yeah, special teams has been an issue so far for the Wildcats. Let's check the call. It's like it's offsides. Off 
So move it up to the 46-yard line for the Mustangs, and that's where their drive will start. You just never know what to expect from a kickoff team now. You just don't, especially you know in high school, you just see so much more happening. All right, let's see if the Elgin Wildcats can stop them again. Yeah, I'm trying to stop execute more on defense. Stripling in the gun, three receivers to his right, first and ten on the 46-yard line. Handoff up the middle, and he's going to be stopped after a gain of around three yards is Dylan Mayberry. And great tackle again by William Simmons along with some other Wildcats gang and tackle. Be That's what I'd love to see. Yeah. You always like to see this good tackling. They're definitely tackling better, and they're reading the defense much better. They're not gaining very many yards. It'll be second and eight on the 48-yard line. Harkins, sorry, not Harkins, stripling in the gun. Snap is back, fakes the handoff, running to his right side, throws it, and catch is going to be made, and then falling down on the ground is number 80 for the Mustangs as Brock Linder, and he's going to be just short of the first down. The third down in the round, believe five yards. Wildcat defense brought pressure in order to draw the quarterback of the Mustangs. To rush him and to pass it. To be third and four from the Wildcats 48 yard line. Stripling in the gun. Snap is back, running to his right side. Looking, looking, looking. Fires and catches gonna be made for the first down. And once again, that is that is again catch made by Brock Linder and be a first down on the Wildcat 39 yard line. And this time Hayden Wells rolled out and drew up a great pass. She first and 10 to 39. Snap is back, stripping, looking, throws to the right side, screen pass, and it's going to be executed to perfection. Rodriguez running up the middle. He's going to be tackled right around the 20 yard line. Rodriguez able to make a few moves. And he's got a little bit of a skip, but it looks like he's going to be all right. So the ball be on place on the Wildcat 21-yard line. And that was Ty McFarlane, I believe. Uh, no, that was Andrew. That was um, that was Andrew Rodriguez. Andrew Ro Rodriguez has the secondary, correct? Yeah. Andrew Rodriguez. Um, he just needed to come up a little more on that one. Um, on that coverage. It's hard to see. So you were talking about who made the tackle. That was Rodriguez on the run. Excuse me. <laughs> Tripling yeah. in the gun. Handoff up the middle. No, fake the handoff. Pass. Trying to reach Johnson, but passes a little bit high. And then he gets brought down, leveled by Devian Isom. Devian Isom. Great tackle on that play. So it'll be second and ten. Great coverage. And with these white uniforms, it's hard to see these numbers. Definitely is. The Wildcats are wearing white. White tops with, with looks like purple numerals and gray pants with the Mustangs wearing purple tops with purple pants, purple socks even, white helmet with a stripe and a Mustang logo. So it's easy to call this both this game of Wildcats all around. <laughs> Handoff up the middle and he's going to be brought down by looks like that was number 17 that was Odie Hens. So gain of around just a yard for Dylan Mayberry be third and nine on the 20 yard line. Odie Haynes, number 17, your outside linebacker, just saw the quarterback and read the play. Read perfectly. that play to perfection. Third and nine now. Wilson in the backfield, stripling in the gun. Two receivers to his right. Be a handoff right side, trying to find room is Mayberry. Believe he has it, all depends on the spot. One judge has him just short of the first down. That's probably in go for it territory, and it will be fourth down. Fourth in about a yard. And number five, Max Galvez, came up on that play to draw that to the fourth down to one. Stripling in the gun. Actually, no, it's going to be Mayberry under center. He's going to take the snap, trying to move the pile. And I think he got it. 
and he did get it. First down for the Mustangs. So Mayberry gets gets in it. The head stripling set up in the gun. Then Mayberry quickly gets under center, takes a snap, and just bowls ahead. Be first and goal from the nine yard line. All right, they put Wildcats on their heels. Now they're putting together a good drive right now. So stripling in the gun, two, three, three receivers to his right. Now in motion goes Mayberry. Snap is a little bit high. Stripling has it. Throws it to the end zone. Catch is going to be made by number 94, Josh Whitecotton, for the touchdown. <laughs> Perfect throw by Andrew Stripling, and Whitecotton's in there. So it'd be touchdown for the Mustangs. I love that pressure by William Simmons, though. It was, he was just a little late. If he got off his block a little sooner, he would have had that sack. I'm guessing they're going to go for two. Well, I would assume so. It looks like they are going to go for two. Stripling is still in there. So Stripling in the gun. Two receivers to his right. Now in motion goes Wilson. And looks like timeout was called. So Elgin calls their first timeout. They'll have two remaining. You know, it is a great timeout. Um, they want to keep the lead right now. Is Elgin, Elgin, Elgin Wildcats are up by two. But at the same time, and it is an early timeout for the first quarter. But as we mentioned, both teams are purple. We are purpled out here. And I'm sure the rest are confused as well as we are. But as we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, it is the Mustangs homecoming. And um, we are celebrating as well, Elgin, Elgin Wildcats here in Marble Falls. And if you know about Elgin, it is an hour and a half drive from Elgin to here in Marble Falls. It took me an hour to get here as well. And in Austin, driving takes me longer. Now, thank you for all who are tuning in at the moment. And now they are out of the timeout. Looks like this time they're just going to go for the normal extra point. Be Logan Barnes in the tip next point. He missed it last time. Interesting call. Tap is down. Wins. Kick is up. And this time it's good. So that makes it a one score, a one point game again. Be Wildcats 14. Must Mustangs 13. So we're going to read off a couple sports. A couple more sponsors. You're listening to Elgin Football here on KMAX Sports and the Vite Media Network. All right. Brown sponsors McQuarrie Insurance Agency, ETX Travel, McLendon Electrical SVCs, Elgin Fertilizer Company, Inc., Ace Hardware, A Flower Connection, Winkler Cindy, Minley. Edward Jones, Jay Sunton, Elgin Air Conditioning and Heating, Juarez Tram Works. Thank you, sponsors, for all of us here. We couldn't do it without you here in the great city of Austin, Texas, Elgin, or surrounding areas. All right, the Wildcats, excuse me, the Mustangs are about to kick it off. Marble Falls Mustangs. And it looks like the Elgin Wildcats are ready to receive. And it is a kick to about the 20 yard line. And that was caught by number six, Davion Ison, with a great return of about 20 yards on the play. And went out of bounds. So Elgin Wildcats will get the ball. And there's a flag on the play. So holding on the return team, Elgin Wildcats number 44, Juan Castillo. Castillo. And the ball will go back to about the 28 
excuse me, the 27 yard line, around there. There's twins to the left, one receiver to the right, one back. Ends it off up the middle. For a gain of a couple of yards on that play. Looks like that was a handoff to number 26, Jerome Ray. They're putting Jerome Ray back in the game. So Harkins in the gun, two receivers to his right, actually to his left, excuse me. Second to seven on the 30-yard line. Harkins looking to throw, rolling to his right side, and throws it. And catching he made just short of the first down. Catch is made by number 15, Ty McFarland. And that's Ty McFarland. He just does an easy in route, inside route for a gain of about six on the play. Um, which makes it, actually, that's actually eight on the play. They're down two to go, and they rush up to the offense. And they're going to snap it, hand the ball up the middle, trying to get the first down. Looks like he has the first down going to that judge is Jerome Ray. It's interesting to see Jerome Ray in on the first quarter as the past, past, past few games, they put him in usually in the second half. So it might be a great call to switch some of his backs out immediately. Switch up the offense a little bit. So first and 10 on the 40-yard line. Harkins in the gun. Hand off right side to McFarland. McFarland trying to find the corner. He's going to have nothing. Like him out lose a yard. That was just a great gained up defense by Mara Falls Mustangs. All like five linebackers just well, not all five linebackers, there's only a few. But all five players on the team just ganged up. And that would be second down, 10 to go. Second and 10 from the 40, Harkins in the gun. Option play. Pitches off to the right side. And he's going to have some running room, but great open field tackle. My number 28, Reese Van Hoos. So Cooper King had some room, but he was brought down from behind to be third and five. But hey, that was not a fumble on the play, so I, I liked how Peter McFarlane held on to the football and just gained a, a couple on there on the five yards. The third and five from the 45-yard line. Harkins in the gun. Two receivers to his left. Snap is back, looking to his right side. Throws it. Catch is going to be made by Trey Heisem in traffic for a first down. That was a simple out route by Trey Ison, who he actually just literally went to that first down marker and was like, hey, throw the ball here, and got that first down. He has at least about three catches, correct? About four? Definitely. He's having a, himself quite a game. Be first and ten on the Mustang 46-yard line. Harkins in the gun. Throw to the right side to Isom. Isom's got some running room, got some blockers, and he's going to have the first down. That was easy, just like. And now bring us to the end of the first quarter. Our score after one is Wildcats 14, Mustangs 13. You're listening to Elgin Football here on KMAX Sports. So it is second quarter, and that was a first down and 10, and I was mentioning it was a great route to the out-of-bounds by Trey Ison, who just caught it. Right now the keys so far of the first quarter are pretty much the passing game by Elgin Wildcats is huge. De de definitely better than the last few weeks. And Trey Ison on the touchdown catches and runs. But hey, we'll take a break here as they have and with the, your sponsors. All right, excuse me, the no sponsors. We are going in second quarter. 
right now with again Wildcats have the ball at your 36 yard line in Marble Falls territory. Hands off up the middle, number 10 Pierre McFarland stopped immediately. A couple of yards lost, actually five yards lost on that play, which will be second and 15. Timeout, Marble, Marble Falls. And we'll take a timeout and I'll continue with the sponsors. All right, gold sponsors, Solid Ground Storage, Frontier Bank, Wilson Pete, Civil Engineers, Trump Listen Electric, Navas Electric, Elgin Chiropractic Center, First National Bank, Rush Chevrolet, Elgin General Store, Southside Market Barbecue, which is really good. It is home of the sausage here in Elgin. If you want barbecue or sausage, I suggest going to Southside Market and Barbecue. Jack's Tires and Wheels. And I guess you go get Tires and Wheels. And it looks like Elgin is ready to make that play. We're just waiting for Marble Falls Mustangs. So we got Jacob Hawkins under the gun. Peter McFarlane on his, behind him, actually. With twin, twins right, one receiver left. A quick pass to That was another pass complete by Trey Ison. And there's a flag on the play. see what the call is. The refs are still huddling up right there on the 40 yard line talking it over. There is no flag on the play. Apparently there's no flag on the play. They waved it off. I wonder what the refs saw as I'm puzzled myself. Alright, but we're back. Wildcats still have the football it's second down, 15 to go. Actually, first down, 10 to go, excuse me. Because there was no flag. Yeah, they picked up the flag. I'm back, everybody. All right. First Thank and 10 the 26-yard line. Harkins in the gun. We hand off up the middle. He's got a lot of running room. It's McFarland. He's trying to get to the end zone. He's going to get into the end zone. Touchdown, Wildcats. McFarland took the handoff right at the middle. And that's the third touchdown of the game for the Wildcats. Makes it 20-13. And immediately, McFarland found running room. Right up the middle, right up the gut. Aaron Arson to attempt the extra point. Snap is down, kick is up. And the kick is good. And that makes it 21-13 in favor of the Wildcats. All right, Wildcats. Another great drive by the Wildcats compared to last week's game where the first half drives drives were not all successful. But here so far, away, not on your home turf, they definitely exceeded my expectations. Yeah, so far they're proven they can execute on, on defense. And that's what their coach talked about, just trying to execute on defense because they had a lot of weapons on offense. So back to receive it this time is going to be Hayden Wells. 
along with Tommy Johnson, standing on right around the 19-yard line. Maybe the onside kick. And to kick it is Kenneth Esquivel. Kick is up. They're going to kick it deep. This time it's going to get to the 20-yard line. Ball's going to bounce. Johnson has it. Trying to find some running room. He breaks one tackle. Breaks another tackle. He's going the opposite direction. He's going to be brought down to the 15-yard line. Johnson just went south. Completely south. He tried to go west, but as we know, the rule of football, just keep stay going forward. Stay north. He was trying to go forward, had nowhere to go. Be first down on the 15-yard line for the Mustangs. Wildcats in front of the Marble Falls Mustangs, 21 to 13. Here in the second quarter, 10 minutes and 57 seconds left. Be stripping in the gun. Snap is back. Pass to the right side. Bobble deer. That's be intercepted by the Wildcats. Picked off. Touchdown. Trevor Magnuson on the deflection. Able to run it into the end zone. And the Wildcats have scored so far 13 points in the last six seconds. Trevor yeah. Magnuson, your outside linebacker, making a huge play for a turnover. The ball was thrown just out of the reach of the receiver and just banked off his hands. That's why you do those tip ball drills. So now it's 27-13. Aaron Arce to tap the extra point. And that made Jan Anderson, the coach, where your Elgin Wildcats for sure happy. Definitely did. Snap is low. Kick is up. And it is good. Arce 4-4 four for four and extra points so far. And the Wildcats take a two-score lead. It is now 28-13. to And things have just gone from bad to ugly for the Mustangs. But just a bit of a bad break there. Let's see if the Wildcats can keep pouring it on. And I like to see this from the Elgin Wildcats after two losses coming out here. And really improved. Like They went from like 50 to 100. In the first half for sure I guess homecoming games are just kind of their bread and butter they like to play these games I called it and you did call it indeed but hey defense right there was spot on and like we were saying all along the saying goes defense wins championships But then again, there are four quarters, and um, we right now it's only the second quarter with 10 minutes and 49 seconds to go. Yeah, you could not, could not give up yet. You got to keep playing as hard as you can. Kenneth Escobar in to kick. But Elgin Wildcats definitely have that momentum. Me Johnson and Wells back deep to receive it. This time they're going to be standing right in front of the 20-yard line. This looks like it might be a short kick. You're not setting very far away from it. And it's going to be kicked deep. They to receive it is Wells. He's trying to find some running room. He's going to be tripped up right around the 36-yard line. So that's their tribal start. So the last drive for the Wildcat, for the Mustangs, ended in a, piss, ended in a pick six, excuse me. So they're looking for a different result here. But right now, if I was Elgin Wildcats, I would be. I'll just continue playing my game, not, you know, not being all hype up or, you know, energized. But yes, you're gonna have that momentum. But continue playing your game and not give up your tackles, and get off your blocks. Looks like there's the offsides there. Excuse me. There's offsides there on the Wildcats. So this drive's actually gonna start on the 41-yard line for the Mustangs. I feel like a lot of those penalties are just miscommunication by each of the players on the Wildcats. You just got to look at that football. Yeah, special teams right now has been their Achilles heel, but 
Hasn't we heard him so far? Straight playing in the gun. Three receivers to his left. Keep on saying he's actually to his right. Looking to throw it deep downfield. It's going to be once again picked off by Trevor Magnuson, but there's a flag on the play. He's got some running room. He's down the sideline trying to make a move. He's going to be tackled all the way down to the 20-yard line. That was actually thrown by Luke Nail, but let's check the flag. This might be coming back. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see if there's they call. Like they call pass interference there. It was Luke Nail in to attempt the pass. Which was woefully short, but could also have been a push on that one. So that was holding on Michael Price. And that takes the interception away and puts the ball on the 46-yard line for the Mustangs. Excuse me, it's actually going to be the 50, the 49-yard line for the Wildcats. And as these penalties continue, digging deeper in a hole for the Wildcats. So this time it is tripling in the gun. Three receivers to his right. Handoff up the middle. Actually, no. Uh, Stripling's going to take it himself, and he's going to be down right around the 45-yard line. Stripling fakes the handoff and gains around five yards. That was a great fake by Stripling. It faked me out, personally. It, it faked me out, too. You, I, I really thought the running back just had the ball there. It was a really perfectly done fake, but only gained around four yards. It'll be first down at the 45-yard line. Say second down at the 45-yard line, second and six. Tripling in the gun. Now, in motion goes Mayberry. That was back. This time, they are going to hand it off. And he's going to be well short of the first down. That was to Evan. It was like Karosi. Actually, could not see the number than that one. I apologize. So, so far, Marvel Falls loves getting this offense where there's three receivers to the right. They definitely do. They love their third and three. Okay, they love their Trips. runs up the middle. Excuse me. I feel like sometimes it fakes out the defense where, you know, you think there's going to be a pass. Third and three now on the 42-yard line. Tripling in the gun. Three receivers to his right. He's going to take the snap. He's going to run on the right side. Catch is going to be made. And he's got running room. It's number 80 for the Mustangs trying to find the corner, trying to stay in bounds. He's going to be brought down right around the eight-yard line. That was number 80 for the Mustangs. That was Brock Linder. He was able to break a tackle. Almost had it. Almost broke it open. Be first and goal on the Mustang 8-yard line. That was number 2 for the Wildcats. They're on the tackle. They're on the tackle. I feel like he uh, got juked out of his shoes right there. But he got back up and got the tackle. So stripling in the gut. Snap is high, but hand up up the middle, and he's going to be brought down trying to move the pile. After a gain of around three yards. That was number 33, Cooper Wilson. Sorry, Copper Wilson. I keep wanting to say Cooper. It is indeed Copper. Copper. And Copper did a great job trying to move the pile for a gain of three. Be second down on the five-yard line. Great ganged up tackle again by the Elgin Wildcats. We'll Definitely. see how they respond in the red zone. And especially when there's Going goal to go. So the stripling in the gun. Everyone's standing around him. Want to be on the lookout here. And off to Wilson up the middle. He's going to be tripped up after a gain of one. It'll be third down on the Elgin four yard line. If the Elgin Wildcats come up with this stop, they'll definitely be huge as they are in the red zone. And sometimes it's hard to stop them here, stop the Mustangs. Definitely. So third and goal on the four-yard line, tripling in the gun, three receivers to his left. Now in motion. And the stripping is going to take it himself, trying to find the end zone, and he's going to be brought down by number 28. That is Michael Price. 
of the Wildcats, and it's going to be fourth down on the two-yard line. Now, right here, if I was Mustangs, I would go with the field goal, but I have a feeling they're going to go for it. And it looks like they are going to go for it. Tripling is still out in the field. So Stripling in the gun. Wilson in the backfield with him. Running to his right side. Wilson, Stripling trying to take it himself. Breaks a tackle. And he's going to be into the end zone. Touchdown! <laughs> Stripling almost brought down out of bounds. Able to dive to the corner. What a great run there. It's going to be a touchdown for the Wildcat. For the Mustangs. Excuse me. For the Mustangs. That was... Their quarterback, just easy option route, and it faked out a couple of the defense defenders there for him to leap over the pie line. So in to attempt the extra point. Snap is down, kick is up, a little bit of a low line driver, but it is good. Sats missing the first extra point. Logan Barnes able to come in and make the next three, so... After that, the score is Wildcats 28, Mustangs 20. Listening to Elgin football here on KMAX Sports and the Vipe Media Network. Logan Barnes in to kick it. McFarland back deep to receive. Kicks up. Kind of a short kick. He fielded around the 20-yard line. Trying to find some running room. Believe that's Trey Isom. It is Trey Isom. Trying to find room on around the right side. And he's pushed out around 44-yard line. Flag on the play. I believe it's a flag on the play. There's no flag on the play at all, so it'll be first down on the 44-yard line for the Elgin Wildcats. They start trying to add on to their eight-point lead. Harkins in the gun. Hand off Isom right side. Isom trying to find some running room. He's going to be brought down right back to the line of scrimmage. That's about it. He had some room, but great tackle by the Mustangs. It'll be second and ten on the 44. Isom had nowhere to go on that play as the Mustangs went down and tackled him perfectly, ganged up. Not quite sure why the clock is not running. And there it goes. So second and nine, the 45, Harkins in the gun. In motion goes Isom. Handoff up the middle. McFarland has it after a gain of around two yards. Another great job by Marble Falls Mustangs. Stopping Elgin Wildcats. They're down seven. So it be third and seven for the Wildcats. Harkins in the gun. Harkins looking to throw it. Rolling to his right side. Now throws back. Screen pass. McFarland has it. He's going to have the first down. Perfectly executed screen play there. He'll be down right around the Mustang 41-yard line. That was definitely a great screen pass. And connected to Peter McFarland. And Peter McFarland with his speed, you can throw a screen pass anywhere and he'll 
get, get to a gain of 10. You also got to you know, give credit to the blocking up front. Always credit blocking up front. If you have no blocking, you got nothing. So McFarlane in the gun. Snap is back. Hand up up the middle. McFarlane trying to find some running room. Can't find anything. And he's going to be brought down for forward progress of around three yards. Actually, excuse me, that was Jerome Ray. Jerome Ray, number 26. This will be second and seven on the 39-yard line for the Elgin Wildcats. Harkins in the gun. Two receivers to his right. Option play. Pitches it. It's number 23. Trying to find some room. And gets brought down right around the 35-yard line. That was number 23, Trevor Black. Trevion Black coming into the ball game for his first run on the... First run of the game, yes. It'll be third and four on the 35-yard line. Both backups come in, play in the first half, mixing up the offense here. Your Elgin Wildcats offense, coach out of Jen Anderson. Third and four from the 35 yard line, Harkins in the gun. Flag on the play, it's gonna be a false start. And it will be a false start on the Wildcats. We'll move it back five yards, be third and nine. So back it up makes it a bit harder to get out of. Ball will be placed right on the 40-yard line for the Wildcats. And there goes another penalty on the Wildcats. Losing some good field position. Some yards. So Harkins in the gun, Black in the backfield. Two receivers to his right. Snap is back, looking to his right side. Looks like a timeout was called on the Wildcats right before the snap is made. So I'm going to take a quick break here. I'm going to read off some more sponsors and we'll be right back. You're listening to Elgin Wildcats football here in the KMAC Sports Bite Media Network. All right, for your silver sponsors, Tri-County Feed, Southwest Stallion Station, Knee Dig for Prosperity Bank, Big Sparp Q. Man, that just makes me hungry for some barbecue, I'll tell you that. Elizabeth Owen PC. Excuse me. Blue Bonnet Electric Cube. Harkins Company. Mayor's Sausage Comfort Systems USA. All right, I love what Elgin Wildcats are doing here. They just need to keep this drive alive. So third down and nine, the 40-yard line. Harkins in the gun, all by himself. Ice him in motion. Harkins looking to throw. Catch is going to be made number 15, tries to shake a tackle. He does shake a tackle. Going down the side of the 15. Didn't going to be out of bounds. Right on the 12 yard. I thought he would have had some room, but he did not. That was number 15. That was Ty McFarlane. And he just did an easy little in route. Quick route. Gain of 30. But like you were saying, Brian, I was thinking he was going to go to the end zone. I thought he had it too. Be first and 10 on the 12 yard line. So Harkins in the gun. The handoff right side. Peter McFarland this time trying to find some room, trying to get the corner, and he's going to be stopped down after a gain of maybe one. And Mustangs were looking for that blitz almost, but it became a ran run play anyways, which that's why there was only one yard on the play. 
Three minutes, nine seconds left to go in the, in the first half. Harkins in the gun. Takes a snap. Option play. Pitches it out to McFarlane. McFarlane trying to find some room, trying to get the first down. He's going to be stopped just short of the first down, be third down. And that was a pretty good block by, I believe, your fullback. Fullback Williams knees lift for a couple of yards. Third and two in the four yard line. Harkins under center this time. And they're going to hand off right side. It's going to be a touchdown for the Wildcats. Let's see who has it. Looks like that was Peter McFarland. It was indeed Peter McFarland. That was just an easy go line package by the Wildcats with Peter McFarland with the ball. When you give him the ball, most likely it's going to be a touchdown. Aaron Arson to attempt the extra point. Kick is up. And good. Makes it 35 to 20 in favor of the Wildcats. We'll be right back. You're listening to Elgin Wildcats football here on the KMAX Sports and Vibe Media Network. Escobar in to kick it. Johnson in back deep to receive. Short kick, not a lot of distance. Me field at the 25 yard line. I believe that was Jaden Hayden Wells. Me down right around the 36 yard line. Wild Falls will have decent field position to go for 2 minutes and 47 seconds. So we're probably going to look for some passes here. So if I was the defense at Logan Wildcats, I'll definitely tighten up that coverage and to be sure to be covering the receivers. And mistakeless, no penalties. Let's see how it goes. Stripling in the gun. Three receivers to his right. It's being handed off up the middle. Big hole. He's going to be brought down right around the six yard line. Is Dylan Mayberry. And that was just a great run by Dylan Mayberry. Alright, so. Mustangs have trips to the right. And that was a pass to number six, 16, Luke Nil. And that was an incomplete pass. He just did a post route, quick post. And right now it's two minutes, 16 seconds on the clock. We have trips to the right, one saver to the left. And Andrew Stripling in shotgun. Motions number seven. Hands it off to Hayden Wills, who has, keeps going to the 40. Has a gain of about 15, 20 on the play. That'd be a Mustang first down and keeps the chains alive. Keeps the ball moving. Two minutes to go in the second quarter. 
We have trips right, twins left, nobody in the back. A quick throw. That was to number 80. Number 80, Brock Linder. Linder for another Mustang first down. Continues moving the chains for your Mar for Marvel Falls Mustangs. Elgin defense looking to cover with Mustangs trips to the left. One receiver to the right. A quick pass to number 80 again. Excuse me, that was number 16 on Marble Falls. Pass to Luke Neal. Right now we are in Wildcats territory on the 15 yard line. Now we have one receiver to the left, one receiver right, one back in the back. Hands off at the middle. Now it's number 33, Copper Wilson, on the carry for four yards of gain. Now make it a first down. All right. Well, the Elgin Wildcats defense needs to step up here and make a huge play. Right now, timeout. Timeout Marble Falls. And since they're going to go to a timeout, we're going to go in a timeout. I just want to reiterate, thank you for listening to KMAX Sports Bite Media. You can just go to KM kmaxsports.com, listen to any games that are going on around your Austin area, Waco, Dallas. Now some key drives on the play were for your Wildcats were to Trey Isom and just running the football by by Peter McFarlane. He has had he's so far has a heck of a game. And continue doing this, we're gonna see some more points on the board. As right now it's 35-20 Wildcats. All right, we are out of timeout. We're going to go back to the game. So we have trips left, closed up, one back. Right now, number nine, Andrew Stripling rolls out. Passes way out of bounds as he was getting rushed. The Elgin Wildcats was bringing the blitz on that play and rushed the passer. Call him off guard. There's a penalty on the play. So it looks like there's no flag on the play, and the, an eligible receiver doesn't affect whenever it was thrown to the opposite side. So it looks like it's still second down, 10 to go. And we are about on the 10 yard line. So one receiver both ways. Both sides and one back. Fakes a handoff. Throws it. But way in the end zone, out of bounds. Way in the back. So there was some tight coverage on the play by the Elgin Wildcats. Otherwise, it would possibly have been a penalty, but just they're playing, playing it out at the moment. The refs are letting them play. So that brings up third down and 10 to go. 21 seconds left in the half. All right, so we got chips left, one back. Fakes the handoff. With the blitz by Elgin Wildcats, which caused it incomplete pass and thrown it away and there's a flag on the play. All 
That was a great pass rushing by Odie Thompson. There was an odd penalty. I didn't get the penalty. Oh, intentional grounding. Receiver to the right, wide receiver to the left. There's a penalty on this play, which possibly might be a holding call by Amara Falls offense or offsides. on the defense actually. Great job, Brian, for calling it. As that gained them five yards, which would make it on the five yard line. Automatic. Actually it's fourth down and five to go, five on the five yard line. One receiver to the left, one receiver right. Number nine, Andrew Stippling, Stripling under the gun. And they call a timeout. And we'll take a timeout here too. For your KMAX Sports Fight Media. And the score right now is your Wildcats up 35. And Marvel Falls Mustangs 20. With 10 seconds to go in the first half. play and looks like Mario Falls Mustangs brings their field goal kicker out to play to kick it now it's number 31 Logan Barnes which made the PAT for about I want to say like 15 plus yards maybe 20 so your new score is 35 Wildcats, 23 Mustangs, as there'll be five seconds left in the second quarter. That was a great stop by Elgin Wildcats, just left it to a field goal instead of a touchdown. And keep in mind, for your halftime, we'll have the band playing, El your Elgin Wildcats band, as well the Marble Falls band play. So you can listen to both. It is their homecoming as well, so you, you'll be able to see, or hear, I want to say, who wins the king and queen for Marble Falls. All right, so the kickoff team is out. And that was actually an onside kick, kind of a squib, which would leave three seconds 
Well played, and that was caught by number eight, Trey Ison. Great hands. So right now there's only three seconds left. Second quarter. Wildcats take over at the 31 yard line. So they're not even probably doing anything here. They're gonna go in victory formation or just easy kneel down. I like to call it kneel down at the moment considering Wildcats haven't got the victory yet. The Wildcats come out on the ball. Peter McFarlane actually in shotgun. Actually, it's a quick pass. It is not a nil down. And that just, that was a quick pass out there, and that just ends the, the first half. All right, this brings the end of the first half, and your score for your Wildcats, Elgin Wildcats, 35. And Marvel Falls Mustangs. 23. We're gonna give you this halftime and we'll be back after the after the bands play and bring you what happened in the first half and more in the second half. As always, I am Michael alongside Brian Green you KMAX Sports Fight Media Football.
I grabbed his hand and goes, oh, that was like, Thank you for all those who are still listening as we enter the third quarter. With the score, Wildcats 35, Mustangs 23. Let's see if the Elgin Wildcats offense can continue running the ball and passing it. Overall, doing a great job both parts of the offense as well in the defense with the the pick six in the first half. If I may interject in here, Michael, I just want to tell everyone at home and listening, um, I'm not feeling well. Um, sometimes I get these massive migraines. It happens. So I cannot complete tonight's game, unfortunately. But uh, Michael, he's going to complete the rest of the game for you. He's been doing a great job. So just as always, big thank you to my mom and dad for helping me call these games. All right, Michael, it's all you. <laughs> all right, we enter the third quarter with Marble Falls kickoff. And the Elgin Wildcats back to receive. All right, the kick to the 10-yard line, run back. Breaks to the fifth, about 45 yards. That was a penalty on the play. And that was Trey Isom on the return. Number eight for Elgin Wildcats. That was a personal foul by Marble Falls, number 90. That'll be 15 yards, adding to that incredible run by Isom. So the Elgin Wildcats will take the ball at the 43 yard line. Already in, <coughs> in Marble Falls territory. Pitch option, quick pick, Pitch option to number 10, Peter McFarlane, who was immediately meet, met by Rodriguez of the Wildcats. And excuse me, uh, the Mustangs. So we have twins left. Twins right, more like a slot receiver by Isom. Jacob Harkins, shotgun. Throws it to number seven, Daniel Gonzalez. 
incomplete pass who ran a post route. That'll be second down and 17 to go. Excuse me, that'll bring up third down and 17. All right, so we got twins left, twins right. Rolls out to pass. Pass to number eight, Trey Ison, which couldn't, which pass would be a complete pass. And that would bring up fourth down and 17. So I assume Elgin Wildcats will bring their punter onto the field. Number two. And the punt is kicked to about the twenty nine yard line. So the Mustangs will take the ball over the 29 yard line. Alright, so Mustangs have the ball. Twins right. Receiver left. Hands off up the gut. Immediately brought back behind, brought back to the line of scrimmage. Great stop by the Elgin Wildcats. That was Jordan Hood. So this will be second down and ten. All right, so we got twins left, twins right. One running back in the backfield. Andrew Stripling, quarterback. Looks to the left side, runs to the left side for a gain of about five, about seven yards. No one seemed to be open. Great coverage by Elgin Wildcats. Same bring up third down and five to go. Ball and 34. All right, so we got twins right. Single receiver to the left side. Got a man man coverage by the Elgin Wildcats, which met up to the running back for a gain of only about a yard. And that would be fourth down and four to go. So I believe they're gonna bring on the punt team. And that's number 10 to receive the kick, but just let it go. Let it let it roll, bounce. 
for about the 19 yard line. So the Wildcats will take over here. Great stop by the Elgin Wildcats. Taking through the second half. Will be Wildcats ball in Mario Falls territory. Must end through. All right, twins right, single receiver left. Option, fake option, kept by Jacob Harkins with a gain about eight on the play. They keep going up with this hurry up offense. Single re twins right, slot receiver motions, hands off up the middle. Again, about a few yards with McFarlane, McFarlane on the carry. Actually, that would be a first down. He only needed a couple of yards on that play. Easy run for McFarlane. As he keeps moving, as Elgin Wildcats keep moving the chains. So you got first down on the 30-yard line. And... Elgin Wildcats looking to run the next play. Looking over to the coach, Coach Anderson. All right, slot receiver in motion. Exact same play with McFarlane. Gain of about nine yards, close to be a first down. Keep running the ball and running that clock out where the Mustangs are going to have a hard time. So we got Twins right, receiver left, another handoff, same play, exactly up the gut by guess who, Peter McFarlane for another first down. If you keep giving it to Ty McFarlane, you're just going to keep gaining and gaining those first downs, keep moving those chains. That so far has been the key so far in the third quarter with seven minutes left to go. High snap, passed out to number five, Max Galvis, for about a gain of six yards. Eventually got met up with Marlboro Falls Mustangs, ganged up tackles. So Jacob Harkins right now is doing an excellent job. Snaps the ball, rolls out to the right, looks to a receiver, but holds it down and runs for a gain of about four yards on the play. Seemed like the receivers were all covered. No one to throw to. But a gain of a, gain of a few. I love that he kept the ball and running and moving. That forced him and no turnovers. Keep in mind, so far, Elgin Wildcats have not turned over the ball so far in this game. Definitely a huge improvement for the Elgin Wildcats. All right, so we got two backs in the backfield. Hands off to number eight, Trey Ison, for a few yards. That was hand off to the right for a few yards of game. That'd be fourth and six. Fourth and six with six minutes and two seconds to go. The band over here for the Marble Falls Mustangs are in it. <laughs> They're right by the cheerleaders on the <laughs> by the touchdown field. I've never seen this before. Well, the Elgin Wildcats are going to kick it off. Punter number four. Back to receive Marble Falls. Who has gains about five yards? That was number 13, Lance Long, with the return. So that'd be a. I feel like that'd be like the second punt so far by the punter. 
And right now, your Elgin Wildcats are up 35 to 23. And as I mentioned before, I am Michael with KMAX Sports Fight Media. Brian had to leave due to a huge migraine. So I'll be taking over play by play. Well, this will be my first time doing it. All right, let's see how I go. All right, so Mara Falls has the ball at the 14. Twins left, twins right. One back in the backfield. Takes the handoff, throws it to number 80. Brock Lander for a first down for 10 yards on the play. So they continue with their hurry up offense. As we know, nowadays in high school, that's what they do. All right, so we got twins low, twins right. They love this package. We're running back in the back with the quarterback to the right side. Face the handoff. That'd be a quarterback keeper, Andrew Strip Shipling. He has some speed for a quarterback, as he can. He can definitely be a huge threat with that run game and also the pass. All right, so we got twins, right? One receiver to the left and a slot receiver in motion. We'll hand off to the ball. That was that jet sweep with the slot receiver in motion. Number 33, Copper Wilson. Copper. Another Mustangs first down. So right now the, the clock keeps ticking with Mustangs football offense. Andrew Shipling back to pass. Passes to number 80 post route. Brock Linder who broke a tackle and going all the way for a touchdown. That was a gain about I want to say 60 on the play. Right there, the Elgin Wildcats defense, secondary, didn't come up with the tackle. And Brock Lender broke it, and it was just nothing but distance on play. So your new score right now, well, as they get the extra point, as they get the extra point, I'll update you. Extra point up is good for Mile Falls Mustangs. And now the new score is Wildcats 35 and Mustangs 30. So Elgin Wildcats about to receive. The Mara Falls Mustangs about to kick it off. Number 31, Logan Barnes to kick. That's number eight, Trey Isom, who's tackled back at the 10 yard line. There's also a penalty on the play. He had, he had barely anywhere to go on that kickoff return. But let's see what the call is by the refs.
personal foul. Face mask on the kicking team. Which that that's that's on the Mustangs kickoff return. I mean kickoff team, excuse me. We'll give Elgin Wildcats about all the way up to the 27 yard line. So we have twins left, one back, one receiver to the right. Quick pass to the right side to the sideline as number eight. Number eight, Trey Ison breaks out for at least about 20 yards on that play for a first down, Elgin Wildcats. Continue moving the chains for your Elgin Wildcats. And as you know, Trey Ison, he's having a huge, huge game today. Almost about 100 plus yards game so far. All right, so we got two backs in the backfield. Makes all the hand, takes the handoff for a quarterback sneak. A gain of 15 yards. Jacob Harkins just totally faked, off, faked the defense. And that QB draw almost. Well, it's not a QB draw, but he faked it. Possibly could have been a QB draw. All right, so they keep moving their sticks. And now the ball's on the 35-yard line. We are in Marble Falls territory with twins left. Slot receiver to the right. Slot receiver in motion. Trayson ends off to number 10. Peter McFarland going for no gain on the play. Which will bring up second down 10. I love the Spire and the Elgin Wildcats right now. They look like a new team in comparison to the last two weeks. So we have Twins left. Slot receiver, not in motion, but he moves to the right and actually was hand off to number 10, Peter McFarland, for a loss of a couple yards on the play. Actually six yards, excuse me, like that'd be third and 16. Ball in the 41-yard line. So I'm looking for a pass here. But at the same time, right now the clock is ticking. But hey, it's a closer ball game with Wildcats are only up by five now. But let's see what number 12 Jacob Harkins has in store. And they're going to call a timeout. Well, we'll see what they do and what Coach Anderson decides to put in number 12's hands. Jacob Harkins. We'll be back to you in a little bit. This is KMAX Sports by Media Network. Here are some sponsors. Braun Sponsors, McQuarrie Insurance Agency, ETX Travel, McLendon Electrical CVCs, Elgin Fertilizer Company, Inc. Ace Hardware, A Flower Connection, Winkler Sandy Finley, Edward Jones, Slash J Sutton, Elgin Air Conditioning and Heating, Hawares Twins Works. Thank you, sponsors. Alright, I'm back here. KMAX Sports Fight Media. This is Michael. And right now we are in Marble Falls, home of the Marble Falls Mustangs. Uh, I don't know what, I know Elgin Wildcats is popular for that sausage. I don't know what's popular about, I guess the view, they say. All right, we are out of timeout, and we are gunning right now on the 39 yard line, third and 16, Wildcats ball. Number 10 rolls out to pass to huge touchdown pass by number 10 Peter McFarland to number 7 Daniel Gonzalez huge connection on the play 
for your Wildcats. Great pass. Great, great pass. Great route running by Daniel Gonzalez, who was open with the PAT. Good. And your score right now for your Wildcats, 41, 42 to Mustangs, 30. That will leave the clock to one minute and six seconds. Ooh. Going back to that pl last play for your Elgin Wildcats, Peter McFarlane actually had that ball, who is also a quarterback. He is sometimes a running back, and he was actually the quarterback who threw that. And it was drawn perfectly. He just rolled out to the right. I like he was running and caught the defense off guard, which, of course, broke up the coverage and left a wide-open receiver, Daniel Gonzalez. And for that seven, TD7. Great play, Elgin Wildcats. So we got number 35, Kenneth Esquivel, to kick off. It's kicked about to the 40 yard line. No, you. This will bring Elgin Wildcats defense out. And after that, six points, seven points on the board. Elgin Wildcats are fired up. As for your Marble Falls Mustangs, we have trips to the right. Slot receiver in motion. Fake handoff passes to number 80 again. Brock Lander for a gain of seven. That'll be second down and three. All right, so we got twins right, twins left. We got coverage four for the defense. Great coverage by Elgin Wildcats. Pass incomplete. That was two number seven, Nathan Wells. That brings up third down and three to go. All right, so we have trips to the left, one receiver to the right. One ran back. Quick pass to number 86. That's Kyle Henshaw of the Marble Falls Mustangs. That was a quick in route. That'd be a Mustangs first down. He just had to go five yards. So we had trips to the left, doing that trip thing again. One receiver to the right, one back. Backs up to pass. And gang, uh, what a great pass rushing by Elgin Wildcats. And you know it. Number nine, William Simmons. With, along with number 45, Odie Thompson. With the pass rush. Great execution by the defense to disturb the quarterback, Andrews Tripling. All right, so we have trips left, one receiver to the right, and Andrews Tripling rolls out to the left side, passes for a first down to number 80 again. 
Brock Lender. He hit his connection with Brock Lender has been on point so far this game. But we go on another timeout. Actually, in a third period. So your new scorer going into the fourth quarter. Other than Wildcats 42. Marble Falls Mustangs 30. Marble Falls territory. Actually, in Marble Falls. Homecoming night for the Mustangs. Interesting homecoming night for them. And as I mentioned in the first half, how Elgin Wildcats won during their homecoming, and now they're winning. So we'll see how this goes. All right, so we are back on the field. Marble Falls ball. Fakes. The pass and hands off to number 30 for no gain on the play. Great stop by number 28 on the Elgin Wildcats defense, Michael Price. That'd be a second down and 12. All right, Mara Falls offense. We got twins left. Receiver to the right. Backs up to pass to in route. That was number 25. Gabriel Barker gained enough for the first down. That was an easy route by I believe the fullback, he just did a in route. Five yards and gain up another five. So we have a receiver to the right, two receiver to the left, one back in the backfield, handoff up the middle for a gain of about close to the first down, 10 yards. And that's number 33 who's continuing carrying the ball. Copper Wilson. So we are the ball is on the 19 yard line in Elgin Wall Wildcats territory. First down and ten. Receiver to the left. Receiver to the right. Gives it to Copper for a gain of about a couple. Copper Wilson in for three yards. Met up against the Elgin Wildcats gaining defense. So it's second down eight right now in Elgin Wildcats territory. Right now, Elgin Wildcats just need to create another stop, possible another turnover, as we've seen before in the first half, which went the distance. So we have Twins right, Twins left, passes to the post route. Can't see the number who caught it. No, I believe that was number six, but that was another Mustang first down. So we got twins right, trips left, backs up to pass, rolls to the left. Looking for the touchdown zone as he keeps the ball. Close to be a touchdown, but it was out at the one by the marker. So we have the ball at the one yard line right now, and it's close to being the end zone. Elgin Wildcats got to step up their D here. 
Hands it out to Copper for easy TD. One yard. Uh, Copper Wilson. Touchdown on that play. Looks like the PAT was good, which makes your new score 42-37. Wildcats on top still. So far, so far, it's a neck-and-neck -neck battle. As Ellen Wildcats scored, so did Marvel Falls Mustangs. Elgin just needs to hold on to the football coming out here. I mean, you have nine, nine minutes, so... I say you need to score on this drive, considering he, the Marble Falls Mustangs have made the margin smaller. They want they want to stay in the game. So the kickoff team is on the field for your Marble Falls Mustangs. Kickoff to number five. Runs to the 50, 40. Going out to the 37 yard, 38 yard line. That was number six, David Isom. Great run by David Awesome, but there's also a penalty on the play, on the kickoff return. The kickoff return definitely had all the blocks. Great blocks. And there's a personal foul, number 44 on the kicking team, which creates great field advantage for Elgin Wildcats. That's 15 yards on top of that amazing run by Isom. The ball would be on the 23-yard line. 22-yard line. All right, so we got Twins led. Receiver to the right. Fake the handoff. Pass out to Isom. Another pass. That would be about 10-plus yards on the play for a first down Elgin Wildcats. So far, Isom, number eight, has had a huge game so far with a few touchdowns and at least over 100 yards, plus that one kickoff return. Hands it off up the gut. Meets up with the Marl Falls defense. Hand it off to Peter McFarland just for a few yards on that play. So right now, Elgin Wildcats are in Marble Falls territory. Just quickly like that, re rebounded from that touchdown by Marble Falls, and now it's Elgin's turn. Let's we'll see if the match magic continues for that number 10. Meter Peter McFarland. As well, of course, Jacob Hartens. So we got a slot receiver. Receiver to the right, handoff. To number 10, Peter McFarland for another five yards. Moving the sticks. Third down and All right, so we have no backs in the backfield. Quarterback rolls up to the right. Passes it to number 10, P. 
Peter McFarland for a TD. Touchdown, Wildcats. Elgin Wildcats. Peter McFarland just did a in route, outside route on the play. Easy touchdown. And your new score so far. Let's wait for it. Wait for it. Ball start on the PAT is good. Your new score, 49 Wildcats, 37 Mustangs. And we are going to take a quick break to you. This is KMAC Sports Bite Media Network. All right. So Silver, silver Sponsors, Tri-County Feed. Southwest Stallion Station, Need Dig 4, Prosperity and Bank, Vix Barbecue, Elizabeth Owen P. Blue Bonnet, Electric Cube, Harkins Company, Mayor's Sausage, and Comfort Systems USA. All right. We are back here with the, with the lead now by the Elgin Wildcats. Back to 12 point lead. 49 to 37. Kicks it off to about the 35 yard line. So the Mustangs will start at the 36 yard line. For those who are just joining us, it is, we are in the fourth quarter with seven minutes and 31 seconds left in remaining. Mustangs ball. We have trips left, twins right. No backs in the backfield. The receiver rolling out. And that was a gain of five by number seven, Hayden Wells. Right, so we have to hurry up offense because the right now the time is ticking. A quick pass to number 80. Number 80, Brock Lander, but a huge hit by number six of our defense, David Isom. Which is now third down and one to go. So we got twins left, receiver right, one back in the backfield. Hands it off up the gut for about five yards, which will give Mustangs a first down. All right, so we have twins left, twins right, one back in the backfield. Goes back to pass. Passes it to number, can't see the number, number 16 with a couple of penalties. A couple of penalties on the play. That was Luke Neal with the catch for a gain of, about to be a first down and 10. 
for gain for first down. Personal foul. Targeting number nine on the defense. That is William Simmons, your outside linebacker, who who I think has to be out of the game now. Interesting new rule in football. Well, they make targeting a priority. I mean, there's always been a priority, but it's, it's easier, I would say, to see. All right, so we got trims, trips right, twins left. Elgin's Wildcats with the pass pressure, which draws an incomplete pass. Andrew Shipling, but going back to that targeting that we see in NFL and college, more so in NFL lately, that it's, it's confusing to understand what exactly is targeting. And from what I hear, it's just head on with the helmet straight up, you know, with that crown going into some part of the body offense of the offenders. So we have trips right, twins left, rolls out to pass and finds breathing room. So he, he actually passes the ball. Too far in front, which was a diving play, but it ended up being an incomplete pass. And that was to actually a pass to number 33, Copper Wilson, who's normally the one who's running. Looks like they're like almost in Hail Mary mode. So we have trips right, twins left. Fakes the pass, but runs up the middle for 10-yard gain, and that'll be a touchdown. This is a neck-to-neck -neck battle right now with a new score. Wait for it. Okay, so that was offsides on the defense. So that score stands. Your new score is Wildcats 49, Mustangs 43 with this PAT. So it's five minutes and 35 seconds to go of the game. And the score is 49 Wildcats, 44 Mustangs. It's been a neck-to-neck, -neck, back to back game right now. If you're tuning in, it's a good one so far. All right, we'll see how this one continues and finishes up here in Marble Falls, home of the Mustangs. As you are listening to KMAX Sports Invite Media, I am Michael. Alongside with the usual, Brian, I had to take over due to a migraine. I hope he feels better. Kickoff is underway. All right, we are back with you. So it's Elgin Wildcats ball, twins right. It's 
single receiver to left. Hands it off to, you know it, Peter McFarland for a gain of 20 yards on the play for a first down Elgin Wildcats. Excuse me, that was 26, Jerome Ray. He has come into play. It's great to see Jerome Ray get, some, get a lot more touches tonight's game than usual. So we have twins right, single receiver to the left. Look to the pass to number seven. Number seven, Daniel Gonzalez. A gain of five yards. That was like an in route. Went up five in. Easy five yards on the play. Actually four. Second down and six to go. The ball's on the 35 yard line. And looking to move that clock in chains. So we got twins left, motion, motion receiver, motion back out. Actually keeps the ball for a gain of about three yards on the play. That was interesting how they had like trips to the left, then motion one the slot, back in, then back out. as offense is looking for the play call by the coach. Coach Jens L. Anderson. Jen Anderson. Jens Anderson. All right, so we got twins to the right. Single receiver to the left. Hands it off to number 10, Peter McFarland. For a few yards of gain on the play, it looks like they didn't come up with the first down. So it'll be fourth and two, so we're gonna see how Coach Anderson will respond. Go for it, punt it, we'll see. But right now it's on the 31 yard line, only two yards, and it looked like they're about to go for it. Jacob Harkins with the, the ball. Twins left. Just gives it to number 10, Peter McFarlane, with the easy first down. That's always an easy run. Just give it to the hands with the big 10. Perfect 10, Peter McFarlane. As long as he has the ball in his hands, he's not gonna get stopped. He's proved to us that so far he has control he has protected the ball all, all game long. Alright, so we go in like a goal line. Like do like a fake razzle dazzle handoff. Fake it to the fullback and pretty much the running back well, it was actually not the running back. But Trey Ison was actually in the offense there because, as he know, he also plays. I mean, the wide right receiver, so he also loves to run it because he is like the fastest, one of the fastest on his team. So right now is a timeout. I believe that was the Mustangs' timeout, and we'll take a timeout too here on KMAX Sports Fight Media Network. All right, so we are back on the field. Elgin Wildcats have the ball. It's in, your, it's in the hands of Jacob Harkins. Makes the handoff, throws it to, I can't see the number. That was to number 15, Ty McFarland. Just a gain of a couple. That was, it. That was a quick route. 
So that last time out was Elgin Wildcats, and now this time out is Marble Falls. They're trying to slow down the clock at the moment. Elgin Wildcats just was gathering. Excuse me. Both timeouts for Marble Falls. Yeah, they're just trying to stop the clock. Right now it's 38 to go. We're, we're in. It's the fourth quarter, two minutes and 18 seconds. So, right now, they gotta make a stop for a Marble Falls Mustangs and do whatever they can to slow down the clock with only one timeout remaining. While Elegant Wildcats have two timeouts. <laughs> it's good old football. Now, Elegant Wildcats just need to keep what, doing what they're doing. Run the football and get this first down. So they get this first down, it could be it could be the game. But we'll see right now. Third and eight, ball on 26 yard line. Alright, so you got slot receiver to the right with receivers both sides. And that's Peter McFarland taking it as a quarterback and he just Rounds it up. I always call it halfback direct, where there's only one running back in the backfield and no, no QB. However, he is also a quarterback. He plays both roles, Peter McFarlane, which makes him pretty vital. So he can do that fake pass, fake run, and pass it, which he did last game, as we saw, for a touchdown. We haven't seen that play yet, but who knows? Right now it's fourth down and seven to go. Ball on 25 yard line. Curious why they're not bringing out their field goal team, but right now it's only a minute and 30 seconds, so we're just. Actually, they're probably. <laughs> of course, they're wasting all the clock they can before they call a timeout. So now the Wildcats call a timeout. Thank you so much for joining today here on KMAX Sports Fight Media Network. I am Michael alongside with, usually usually alongside with Brian. He had to go at halftime from having a migraine. So this is actually my first play calling experience here. So thank you for tuning in. And what a game it has been so far. These two teams have been battling out. It's going back to back, stopping back to back drives. And what a way the Elgin Wildcats have responded each time, considering they haven't turned over the ball whatsoever, protected the ball. And now, up to the offense here. Elgin Wildcats offense to keep the game alive. Well, get this first down at least. Pass to the right side. That was passed to number seven, Daniel Gonzalez, out to the end zone, which was broken up by the Marble Falls by Marrow Falls defense. What a stop on that play. Gutsy call by Elgin Wildcats of passing it right there. Passing it in the end zone. Going for the score. However, that'd be a turnover on downs as well. And however, you have Marrow Falls ball with only one timeout. With one minute and 21 seconds. So we got trips to the left, slot receiver to the right. And the cornerback looks up, runs it, but fakes the run, passes to number 83, Warren Copeland. Looked like he was about to run past the line of scrimmage, but passed it sh before it to Warren Copley. Now we have to move the ball, considering the time is running. So we have... Empty backfield. And he passes it to 
I believe that'll be number 16, Luke Nil. And that moves the sticks for another first down. Right now we're in Elgin Wildcats territory on the 45-yard line. And number nine, Andrew Stripling, the quarterback, spikes the ball, which stops the clock at 58 seconds. So you're looking at second down 10 on the 35-yard line. This defense needs to step up here with trips to the right, twins to the left, no one in the backfield. Of course, this pass looks to the left, rolls to the right, pass to the right side with open receiver and open receiver. I'm looking to see the number. He, it was a seam route in the right of the end zone and that was a touchdown. Marlon Falls Mustangs, which came up, that'd be 50 Mustangs, Wildcats 49. I couldn't see who caught it. But wow, that's all I have to say. What a finish going on here in Marble Falls. But hey, there's still time right now. We have 48 seconds. We do have an injury on the play. Yeah, we have an injury on the play by Marble Falls. Looks like he's just cramping though. What a change of events. And it looked like Elgin Wildcats were just out of breath. As the Marble Falls Mustangs just took it, most of the field, less than like a couple minutes remaining. They go for two instead of the PAT, which was incomplete pass. They're looking to move that score up where they could lead by three, so that way the Wildcats only had to kick a field goal. Well, and tie it versus kicking a field goal and winning it. So your score, Wildcats 49. And Mustangs, 50. What a change of events so far going on in the last few minutes. As Marl Falls took total control in that. And let's see how Elgin Wildcats will respond. We still have time, so don't go away, folks. We still have time in this ballgame. With 48 seconds remaining, it's been a wild one so far. This is KMAX Sports by Media. Let's see how this return is. I'm, in, I'm curious of this kickoff, how it's a nice kick to the 10 yard. 10 yard line. Now it's caught by number 10, Peter McFarlane, of course. He ran all the way back to the, about the 38-yard line. So right now, they have about 62 yards to get a score. With 41 seconds left in the, game, in the ball game. Mustangs 50, Wildcats 49. It is a close one, so stay tuned. As the Wildcats rush onto the field. 
We got twins left. Receiver to the right. Makes the pass. Pass it to the left side. And that was a pass to Trey Isom, which... Excuse me, number 15, Ty McFarland. And that was an incomplete pass. That looked like a seam to the left. Filled a little short. 34 seconds remaining of the ball game. With one timeout left with the Elgin Wildcats. So the Twins left, receiver to the right. All right. As we know, it's probably gonna be a pass. Rolls out to the left. Seam wide to the left. Trey Isom comes back to the ball. Excuse me, Ty McFarlane. Touchdown, Elgin Wildcats, touchdown. That was about a 60 yard pass. Connected, pass by Jacob Harkins to Ty McFarlane. Wow, the school. That'll be 55 Wildcats, 50 Mustangs. Number 15, Ty McFarland. He did an easy seam route to the left side of the end zone. And I looked at him all day. I was like, I knew. I knew Peter McFarlane was in pass to him. He was open, wide open, nothing but green. His speed is like no other. What a credible, credible play. Elgin, Elgin Wildcats lead 55 to 50. Woo. So a timeout called by Elgin Wildcats on the for the PAT. What a great route by Ty McFarlane. I feel like it was it was an easy seam left side. He beat the cornerback who was guarding him. It was a touchdown. 21 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Now, that was just about 30 seconds play drawn up in the making. Actually about less than that. So we got 21 seconds left, which anything can happen. Anything. All right, we are back to kick the PAT after that timeout. Mustangs still have one timeout left. So since they are up by five, the Wildcats, they're gonna go for this two point, not the PAT. Looks like there's twins to the left, slot receiver to the right. And that was that was a pass. The ball snapped to Peter McFarland. Hands it off to number six, Evan Ison. And passes to number 12, Jacob Harkins, for the touchdown. What a trigger you play. Huge trigger you tricked me out, too, myself. Which brings up the score to 57. 250. Elgin Wildcats. Whew. This game has worn me out. Thank you for, thank you all you guys for tuning in who are still with me here. As you know, my partner, 
my partner Brian had to leave due to a migraine. The regular play-by-play -play guy. But of course, I have not gone anywhere. As we are in Marble Falls. So the score now is 57 Wildcats, 50 Mustangs. 21 seconds left. Let's see what all what kind of magic any of these teams still have. Now the ball is going to be kicked off from the 25-yard line due to some penalties. What a game so far for those who are just got tuned in. It has been a battle so far in the second half. Both teams going back and back. And who knows what could happen now. Elegans kick it off. And they kick it like a somewhat of like a squib type onside kick. I don't understand why they just kicked it far. But then again, there's only 20 seconds left. Going from a 50 yard line is still a lot. Considering both guys haven't brought their kickers on the field. Both teams. So stay with us here at KMAX Sports by Media Network for your Elgin Wildcats. Your Elgin Wildcats are on defense now. While Marvin Falls, Mustangs trying to make a play. Trying to make a comeback here at 20 seconds remaining of the game. And the ref throws a flag. Delay a game on the offense. That'll be a five yard penalty. Still first down, but moves them back. First and 15, 15 yards to get the first down, but they're gonna look for the end zone. So I expect some great coverage by the secondary looking for that, I mean that quarter type coverage. And pass to number 33, Copper Wilson, incomplete pass. Second and 15 with 15 seconds remaining. All right, so we got trips left, twins right. Probably looking for a somewhat of a Hail Mary here with 15 seconds left. They all go out. Pass to number 16. Sixteen Luke Neal for a first down and he just goes right out of bounds to stop the clock at seven seconds remaining. Right now, the Elgin Wildcats, their defense is backed up to the 30, while Marl Falls actually takes the timeout. So right now, the Wildcats are 57, Mustangs are 50. Seven seconds left to go in the game, and it's on the ball. It's on the 44-yard line in Wildcats territory. Third down. Downs don't matter. The game is on the line right now for the Marble Falls Mustangs. And the Elgin Wildcats bring out the defense and make the crate stop. Because right now, this is probably the last play. Unless it goes out of bounds for a quick first down. Which is unlikely to happen. Keep in mind, this is Marble Falls homecoming. And El well, Elgin Wildcats have won on their homecoming. So let's, why not win on Marble Falls homecoming? All right, it is, the game is on the line now for your Marble Falls Mustangs. Trips to the right, twins to the left. No backs, of course. And the secondary is way back to the 20 yard line. Looks for a pass. Passes to number 33, out of bounds. 
which stops the clock at three seconds. That's Copper Wilson. All right, three seconds left. Let's see what is in the arm of Andrew Shipling, number nine, the quarterback for Marble Falls. We're probably looking for a Hail Mary here. I would have expected a little more yards on that last play, but they want to stop the clock. <laughs> This is the ball game now. Last play of the drive. Last play of the game. We have trips right, twins left. All the defense of the Logan Wildcats is backed up. Rolls out to the left. Rolls to the right. Keeps rolling. He passes. Passes deep. And it's in incomplete by Elgin Wildcats defense who wins the game. That's Elgin Wildcats 57, Mustangs 50. This is Michael with KMAX Sports by Media. I am gladly to present to you this Elgin Wildcats victory. What a comeback. What a crazy one it was. It wasn't so much of a comeback, but what a close encounter back and forth. As Mara Falls did have it there for a minute, but Elgin Wildcats took over. Thank you, as always, again for listening to this KMAX Sports broadcast. Thank you, Chuck LaCachata. Thank you, Merle. Thank you, Suna. Thank you for those. Thank you. Thank you, Les Cleary. Thank you, um, Brian. Everyone else. Thank you for listening to this broadcast on KMAX Sports and Vite Media. And way to go, Elgin Wildcats. As the score was quickly taken down. That was 57, Elgin Wildcats, and Marble Falls, 50. I'm Michael, as always, and... Thank you for tuning in. We'll be back here next Thursday for the next game. See y'all. Have a great weekend.